you're with Julian on the brand note and a review of The Omen which I watched recently for the first time in many years and it's a hugely interesting film from a very interesting director from America called Richard Donner whose career is so varied um, The Omen was the first film that he made that was a, a big success but he followed it with Superman um, and he did Interestingly, he did Superman 2, but was replaced. Um, but he did do... I think he did the... Um, no, that was the last Superman that he did, actually. But after that, he did uh, Goonies, Lady Hawk, Lethal Weapon. In fact, he did Lethal Weapons 2 and 3 and 4. Uh, so he's got like this really weird career of um, strange blockbusters. Um, the Omen itself... It's written by David Seltzer. Now, one important element of the Omen, which is about a the American ambassador to Britain thinking that his child is the Antichrist. Now, if you look at the evangelical Christian movement in America today and them calling Barack Obama the Antichrist and saying the world's going to end, blah, blah, blah. Back in the 70s, this was a huge thing. I don't know what the book was called, but I think the best-selling book of the 1970s was about the fact that, from an evangelical uh, Christian writer, was about the fact that the Jews would return to Israel, which had happened in 1947 with the formation of the State of Israel, and that the Roman Empire would re-emerge, which was coming with the formation of the European Common Market, and that the Antichrist would be in politics, uh, someone that would rise through politics. So the Omen had this incredibly strong background in evangelical fear. Although I say fear, given every time I've heard the evangelicals talk about the end of the world, they, regard, they seem to be celebrating that fact, not denouncing it. I guess because they believe that they're all going to be saved. Um, so we get the impeccable Gregory Peck um, as Robert Thorne who is newly appointed as the US ambassador to the Britain and in the opening sequence we see that his wife Lee Remick is in childbirth in Italy and once the baby is born it dies it's his son and it dies she doesn't know this there are complications during childbirth Baby's taken away. Doctors confront Gregory Peck and tell him that child's died. But they say in this small town in Italy, in this hospital, that a mother has had a ba baby boy and the mother's died. Will you take this child to be your child? Otherwise, he's going to be sent into these appalling foster homes. And he agrees. Not a very good decision, as it turns out. The child within the child is is immaculately played by Harvey Stevens. His great performance is pitch perfect, and he barely speaks in the whole film. It's really well done. Um, they do. He does so much right in this film. Um, it is hokum, but he does so much right as a director, and especially with the actors. Those top three, Gregory Peck, Lee Remick, and Harvey Seamus, are pitch perfect. So when Charles is having his, I think, fifth birthday party, the nanny who's holding the baby is being a bit weird with him, and the mother, Lee Remick, takes the baby away. The next shot we get is a masterpiece, which is the nanny's waving to all the children and everything from one of the upstairs windows in this country manner and she's got a noose around her neck and she says i love you damien and then she jumps out the rope snaps tight and she smashes through the windows below hanging herself you see it's they do the little things in this so well like it's such an appalling scene the fact that all the children are watching from that point on things get worse and worse and worse with this creeping dread about Damien. Um, it's the same kind of creeping dread 
never done better than here that you get in a movie like Insidious where there's a child involved and the parents are gradually sort of coming to this realization that there's something terribly wrong and also the one with Ethan Hawke that's even better than Insidious where they they know something's wrong and then events start happening and compiling and getting bigger and worse and Gregory Peck is the master stroke of this film in fact the only films which got progressively worse two is still very doable three was pretty awful and four and five and maybe even six I don't know how many they did I think they had a reboot were just abysmal but the second film had William Holden having these two golden era of Hollywood legends in those main man roles was elevated the whole film's uh, credibility by miles they're not um, showy actors they just bring this enormous weight of conviction to their performances and that's Gregory Peck is, is definitely that here and he's approached by a priest who says by the way your son's Satan um, he ends up due to a number of things happening such as a nanny arriving who is the scariest nanny in any movie since Alfred Hitchcock's Rebecca who you would kick out of the house the first time she crossed you but she manages to install the most terrifying Doberman or Rottweiler actually a Rottweiler in the house to guard the child and is incredibly domineering over the mother who tells her to get lost quite a lot, but she just kind of refuses. Um, and the child ends up severely injuring the mum, who we find out was pregnant with his real child. The mum at this stage still doesn't know that that's not her child, but she's starting to have very bad thoughts about him, not being hers, her not connecting with him, and him being evil. Uh, and the... He, Damien realises that she's carrying a child who would inherit what he's inheriting. So she, he tries to knock her off the balcony, uh, putting her in hospital. Which leads to Gregory Peck going to Italy and uncovering all sorts of traumatic information about what actually happened during the birth of his son and his real son's death. And also the fact this church, uh, this hospital where his wife miscarried miscarried was um, burnt down um, the, lots of these elements have been ripped off in other films it's got this whole sort of Da Vinci Code sort of vibe it's it's so much superior to that um, about going to these sort of you know, Italian churches and small towns and graveyards and just uncovering these portentous things that relate to the past it's been ripped off many times and also the um, fabulous Pope's Exorcist absolutely magnificent film plays it for laughs one of the strongest elements of this film is they play it so straight they don't do anything camp they don't do anything for laughs another of the strongest elements to this hokum is that the screenplay is so tight there's not really a wasted scene many of these films have they float along and they have so many superfluous wandering scenes that don't do anything but virtually every scene in this means something and it chilled me as a child particularly stuff like when the uh, photographer i think it's david warner um starts showing them pictures that he's taken of people that have died having this shadow of a of their impending doom coming towards them um it doesn't over it doesn't rely on gore or anything it's got some really gruesome deaths but only a few and they it seems like there's much more gruesomeness but there isn't it's mainly building dread and gregory peck coming to terms with the fact that his son is satan um this is uh, a lot of films in the modern era from the likes of hereditary and insidious and oh, i wish i could remember the um, ethan hawk one have all played on this trope about their child being evil and the parents noticing things getting progressively worse and reacting to this possible evil that has come into their house. This is, I think, ground zero for that. Rosemary's Baby was never as dread-fueled as this. It, it was a sat largely satirical sort of film with horror in it, but there's not one laugh in this entire movie, which is for its benefit. Um, 
and the acting of Remick and um, particularly Gregory Peck and Harvey Stevens as Damien is excellent. Um, it, it's a massive cut above the likes from that era of John Carpenter's Halloween, which is uh, much more relatable to the Friday the 13th franchise. This plays itself as a serious drama, but it's obviously quite silly, but it does it with such a straight face that it, it actually works. So I thoroughly recommend this one. The second Omen film is nearly there. It's got very good individual sequences, but the screenplay as a whole wanders a lot more. Some of the death sequences in it in the moment are probably even above this one, but um, it doesn't have the tightness of this one. And the way that the story unfolds towards the end is pretty dark. Um, Gregory Peck realising what he has to do to his own son and the way the movie resolves itself is dark, uh, which is great which is exactly what you sign up for. So a very quite frightening film for what it, for, for what it is and um, very sort of ominous. And there was something more scary about this kind of demonic film than there ever was about monsters. This feeling that, you know, there's, there's a force, an evil force that can do bad things to you and there's no escape and it can infect everything about your life. Um, so I thoroughly recommend The Omen, and even though it is hokum, it's done so well by a consummate director, Richard Donner, that I'm going to give it 8.5 out of 10.